Good evening and welcome to Verdict. On the show tonight is the larger focus on global warming being diluted by the UN panels on climate change's so-called faulty reports. There's a fresh controversy now over the possible links that the British newspapers have said were apparently mentioned in an IPCC report which mentioned possible links between extreme events and global warming. That, they say, was unsubstantiated. Well, to answer these allegations, joining us tonight from Mumbai, the man in the eye of the storm, Dr. R. K. Pachori, chairman of that UN panel on climate change. I'm also joined in the Delhi studio by Dr. Murari Lal. He's one of the authors for the IPCC Asia chapter report. Joining me from Chandigarh, Dr. V.K. Raina. He's a glaciologist and author of the Ministry of External Affairs Glacier Report. Joining me from Mumbai, well-known wildlife and environmental activist, Bittu Segal, editor of Sanctuary Asia. Also joining me from Great Britain, from York, Richard North, correspondent of the Daily Telegraph. Uh, the paper has written a lot against the IPCC's flawed reports. That's on the show tonight. Our focus on verdict tonight. Are natural disasters linked to global warming or not? This fresh controversy over a UN panel on climate change report which with an English newspaper alleging that this report is faulty. They claim that this report is what many world leaders base their submissions on in the recent Copenhagen summit. Barely a week after widespread criticism forced the IPCC to publicly admit it was wrong on Himalayan glaciers, the Nobel-winning UN body is facing a new controversy. This time, for a report in its fourth assessment, linking the severity of natural disasters to global warming. The paper was published in 2008 by scientist Meyer Woods, linking, amongst other things, storm surges to climate change. An article in the Sunday Times says the paper was not put through scientific scrutiny and leaders should have been told ahead of the crucial meeting last month in Copenhagen. Well, the climate skeptics really don't need any provocation. They have been lying in the in the dark all this while just waiting to attack and now it was accepted for publication it was then published in a book which was peer reviewed uh, so that statement is totally wrong the IPCC however says that it had at the time published a caveat with the paper saying we had insufficient evidence to claim a statistical relationship between global temperature increase and catastrophic losses the IPCC did not carry out due diligence on their report it is cause for great concern. We have to invest more in understanding what is happening. And while everyone admits that more research is needed, climate watchers and environmentalists are also increasingly worried. Last month, leaders from more than 130 countries had gathered at Copenhagen to broker a climate deal based primarily on the findings of the IPCC reports. Developing countries, including India and China, which had brokered the Copenhagen Accord, had yesterday asked the West and particularly the United States to make good its promise to cut back on emissions and also pay out the immediate $10 billion in aid to countries most vulnerable to climate change. The big question now, how much of a setback will the latest revelations affect the politics of climate negotiations? With Bureau Input, Siddharth Pandey for NDTV. Well, referring to the series of controversies surrounding the UN panel and its climate change reports, UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown today said... The controversy does not undermine efforts to reach a climate deal as academics and countries are agreed on not letting global temperatures increase. So the question I'm asking on verdict tonight, facts not fiction. Is the larger focus on global warming being diluted by the UN panel's faulty reports? SMS as India Space Yes or India Space Note 5638. You can 388. You can also log on to NDTV.com or you can write to me at NDTVsocial.com slash Sonia. Well, let me begin now by going straight across to Dr. Pachori, as I said, the man in the eye of a global storm at the moment. This fresh reports about the latest IPCC blunder. That's how the English paper has described it. They've said that you made a mistake by actually linking in one of your reports global warming to extreme events like hurricanes and typhoons in recent years. Would you like to clarify, sir? No, we have not made a blunder. In fact, these people are creating a deliberate distortion, in my view, because they're two separate things. One is uh, the association of extreme events with climate change, on which there is absolutely no dispute. Uh, but on the other hand, what they're talking about is losses from disasters and whether these can be linked to climate change over a period of time. And they're questioning a paper that we have used 
essentially for coming up with a conclusion on the changes in disaster losses over a period of time. Now, let me explain. Disaster losses don't mean anything at all because, you know, look at the state of Florida. Fifty years ago, if there was a, a hurricane over there, there would have been massive destruction and perhaps a lot of losses that would, would have taken place. Today, there are early warning systems. There are all kinds of other measures that people can take to minimize losses, including the construction of their homes. So, you know, to treat that as anything of significance, in my view, is totally wrong. What we, are, what we should really be worrying about is the increase in the intensity and frequency of floods, droughts, heat waves, extreme precipitation events, all of which is in, incontrovertible. Mm -hmm. And these people are deliberately in that article trying to mix up the two. So you're saying it's actually just uh, diverting from the real issue. Let me just go across uh, to Richard North, correspondent of The Telegraph, uh, not, of course, the paper which published this article, which is at, but which has raised many questions on the reports and the functioning of this UN panel on climate change. Mr. North, if you can hear me, many, we've seen many climate scientists saying that this is a battle between climate skeptics and scientists. And it's a dirty battle. They say powerful lobbies are behind it. And that's why these attacks have suddenly increased after Copenhagen. What would you say as a journalist in response? Well, if Dr. Bachari could actually see me now, I think he would um, wonder about these powerfully uh, vested interests. I'm a freelance journalist, and I um, am motivated by exactly probably the same that many people are, is a search for the truth. Mm -hmm. And the fact is that the IPCC report is not the truth. Uh, Dr. Pachari is, is defending a losing case because e e even now, um, a as we speak, the, the news is already up that there's another major error uh -huh. in, in, in the IPCC report. We, we were looking at the glaciers in Chapter 8. We're now talking about the, the misuse, and it is misuse, of the data on national and natural events. Uh -huh. And now we see in, in chapter 13 that the IPCC has also relied on its claims uh, for the uh, sensitivity of the Amazon rainforests on another WWF report, um, which is actually written by a freelance journalist and green activist. Right. Um, last night there was a, uh, an analysis done of, of the IPCC report, we're still working on it, and there's something like over 20 uh, key references to scientific so-called facts based on non-peer review reports from, from lobbyists, uh, green lobbyists as, as wide as the WWF, and even including one of our own countryside lobbyists, the Countryside Landowners Association. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, that's an interesting point and a worrying one if you're saying that the reports are not based on actual silence. In fact, let me just go across uh, on actual facts, sorry, not on actual science. Let me just go across to Dr. Pachori now. Well, we've heard what Richard North, The Telegraph, says. He's a freelance journalist. He says he's not part of a climate lobby. But the larger issue, whether these reports are based on actual science and facts. Now, one worrying aspect is that the reports also allege that global leaders are basing their assessments on these reports, this is what uh, forms the basis of their claims and counterclaims in recent, in, like what happened in the Copenhagen summit. How far do we actually go down this road? If the IPCC reports are questioned, what does it mean for the larger debate on global warming?